Hello, hello, God bless you. It's your girl, Benita. Welcome to part two of I Will Not Fear. Today we're going to be focusing on the fact that you are still okay, even if you are afraid. You are still okay. But we're going to start with our theme song, God Has Not Given Me the Spirit of Fear. So I'm going to cue that up and we're getting ready to party. <laughs> hey! Yes, absolutely. God has not. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us. Yeah, but he has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. Come on. God has not given us but he has given unto us the spirit of power the spirit of love and a sound mind come on hey God has not God has not given us yeah but he has given unto us the spirit of power the spirit of love and a sound mind. Yeah. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He has given unto us, hey, spirit of power, a spirit of love and a sound mind. Woo. Hey. That's right. Come on. Wait on the Lord. He has given unto us a spirit of love, a spirit of love, and a sign. I got to mix up myself. Be strong in the Lord, not ourselves. Woo! For he has given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sign. strong in the Lord, not ourselves. Hey, yeah! He has given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Woo! Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his For you have given unto me the spirit of power the spirit of love and a sound. Hey! Yeah! Come on. Wait on the Lord and be of good. Because he has given unto you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Woo. God has not. Let's make it personal. God hasn't given me. Come on. God has not given me a spirit, for he has given unto me a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Woo! Hey! Come on. Wait on the Lord and be up, because he has given unto us, yeah, yeah, a spirit of love. Sound mind. Hey! Be strong in the Lord. Hey! <laughs> yeah! For you have given unto me a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Yeah! Woo! The word of the Lord says in 2 Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us to us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Hey, come on and party with me. Hey, God. Hey, come on. I want to let you know that you have been given a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Hey, yeah, yeah, Lord. Woo. Hey, <laughs> come on and party with me. Come on. Yeah, 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 Lord. 
strong in the Lord. And in the power of my come on, come on, I hear you. I can't hear you. For he is given unto us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. Wait on the Lord and be a good. Come on. Wait on the Lord. Yeah. Because you have given unto me a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. God has not given me a spirit. Come on, let's make it personal. Come on. God has not given me a spirit. For you have given unto me a spirit of power, a spirit of love. lesson as we are learning how to overcome anxiety which spiritually speaking is simply fear i want to take the opportunity to welcome everyone who may be with us though i may not call you by name know that i see you and i certainly appreciate your presence so today we're going to get ready to go into the word i want to let you know you're still okay even if you are afraid We have to know that first. We have to know that the fact that we may be struggling with issues does not affect our identity in God. Come on, somebody. You're still the beloved of God if you're trembling in your boots or not. You're still the beloved of God if you are depressed. Come on now. You are still the God's beloved. God loves you no matter what. Hallelujah. You did not lose your spiritual identity. You did not lose your status in God. Hallelujah. It's a question of quality of life. Come on, somebody. You still going to heaven and to be able to eternally be with Jesus Christ, the Father. Hallelujah. Everybody that has gone before you. None of that has changed as you have to deal with this issue. Amen. So I'm going to be sharing from my book that I've written, I Will Not Fear. And we're going to talk today about the fact that you are still okay. And we have to let go of the shame. See, God can't get to the issue if we are full of shame that we have it. So let's talk about that. It says so many of us are actually ashamed that we are full of paralyzing fear, especially because we are a believer. And if you're anything like I was, I tried to to perfect an image after I came to Christ. Instead of me running to God with every suitcase full of mess that I had and dumping it out and saying that God helped me to work through this. Instead of me being so grateful that finally I had someone who had the power to heal me. The power to deliver me of all the mess and all the the, the, the hurts and the pain that he had a healing salve that was available to me, my concern was never let him see you sweat. Come on, somebody. Especially being a preacher. Oh, girl. <laughs> I had to fake it. And they used to say, fake it till you make it. I've had people pull you aside and say, now you know, it, this is getting ready to happen. You got to put on your your um, your, your uh, face. Uh, what was that? Uh, some kind of blank face or a square face or whatever kind of face it is. <laughs> where you do not show your poker face and where you're not showing any emotions and you were torn up on the inside. But I'm here to tell you that I don't have to try to do it, fake anything in the natural that God can really do in the spirit realm. Come on, somebody. I want to let you know that we have a God who can really heal us and deliver us authentically, and we don't have to fake it. It goes on to say here, what I discovered was that the prelude to deliverance in this area is that we have to be willing to be honest. We have to be willing to be honest about struggling with this area called anxiety or spiritually speaking fear. We got to be honest. 
God is attracted to honesty. Amen. He is not attracted to us trying to project a certain image and to be pious. Come on, somebody. God likes to be needed. Amen. And so I want to exhort you today that the first thing that we have to do is to be honest about the fact that we need help. It says that some of us are so disheveled because we are fearful that we live in a place called denial. Oh, girl, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my refuge and my strength. And all that's very true, but is it true to you? <laughs> Have we actually gone through the process of partnering with God in order for us to find out what our part was in reference to um, getting rid of fear? Or is it just an image? Are we just so uncomfortable with who we really are and where we are that we don't want to be honest? But we have got to be honest because if not, we actually block the hand of God from assisting us. It's a level of pride. There's an element of pride in the, in the emotion or accepting the emotion of shame. Amen. We'll go that back to the, uh, the, to the um, word of God in Genesis. What happened when um, Adam and Eve were ashamed? They wanted to be covered. So if we are ashamed, we want to be covered because we don't want anybody to know what is going on with us, okay? And I wanted to say it reminds me of a person who has a cold. I've told, I've given this scenario before. You have been coughing all week. Your eyes are big as quarters. You have, you have tears coming down. They're red. You know, you are you have been struggling, coughing. Everybody, you know, please, mom, dad, please, <laughs> you know, get away from us. You're coughing. Your your ears, there's a tickle in your in your throat going down from your ear, and so you finally make an appointment to go see your doctor. You go in. You write your name on the on the waiting list. You wait. Oh my God! And you're coughing and you're sneezing and your eyes are watering and your nose is running or your nose is stuffy and your sinuses are pulsating. And you go all the way to the doctor. And what religion has taught us when the doctor says, "Okay, tell me about what's going on with you," we say, "Um, oh, I'm fine." <laughs> You know, I've been in the church for 25 years, and I'm an usher, and so I've been through storms of life, and I'm fine. Instead of saying, help! <laughs> help! Help! We have been taught to be fake. Come on, somebody. We have been taught to have a facade, but it actually blocks the hand of God to be able to help us. The scripture says, let's take it to the word. The scripture said that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. So in order for us to get what we need to hear what we need, because let me let you know that it, it takes the spirit of God to be able to open our ears so that we can hear what it is we need in order to get help. So we have to humble ourselves. We got to say, God, I, I am just toe up from the flow of. And I just want to tell you, join the crowd. <laughs> join the crowd. Hello. Hello. We all have issues and it's okay. You are okay. You are still loved immensely by God, even if you have an issue. That does not disqualify you. It actually qualifies you to have help. I have here also traditions, a misinterpretation of the word of God through erroneous teaching and a fear of rejection have motivated many of us to promote ourselves as supermen and wonder women. I like uh, that one of our members said, which I thought was so on point, she said that we are supernatural and that we have housed in us a soup, the supernatural God, but we're not superhuman. No. <laughs> when we get cut, it hurts. Amen. When, when, think, when life happens, it hurts. And so we have to begin to investigate, okay, God, what do you have for this? You're the one who said that in this world I'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer, that you have peace. 
How do I tap into it? These are the types of questions that we need to be asking. It goes on here to say that we have allowed pride to lead us to a place where we feel like we have to hide our human frailties behind the longevity of our relationship with God or our church membership or maybe uh, the fact that we, our intellect, you know, I have went to this Ivy League school and I know all the technical terms for this. You know all of that, but you're miserable. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You know all that, but you're still full of, full of fear. Come on. God wants truth. God can handle truth. God is not some frail God that's afraid of even our truth. Amen. The scripture says that God desires truth in the inward part. It's not just our truth he wants there, but he also wants to be able to put his truth on the inside of us. So we have to learn to be honest. And you've got to know that you are still okay even if you are afraid. There is a scripture that says that when... David, great man of God, said, when I am afraid, Psalms 56 and 3, when I am afraid, that means it happened. Hallelujah. We're talking about a man of God. We're talking about a man who's a king. We're talking about someone who, who, who slayed um, 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 Goliath. We're talking, he said, when. <laughs> it happened. Hello, hello. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. A decision was made when he was afraid. And we'll get to that later. But the bottom line is we need to be okay with that. Some of us now are in the, the, the claws of the enemy to the degree that we are because we didn't want anybody to know. That feeling that I need to hide is not coming from God. Amen. Now, a lot of times you do that because people don't have the revelation. But the bottom line is that God wants you to be okay and for you to know you are okay. He loves you just the same. You don't ever have to get healed from any of this. And you heaven is still your home. Amen. It says here that shame, which we're talking about, um, because a lot of us are suffering in silence. Shame means a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of our own wrong doing, weakness, or foolish behavior. When we feel insecure about having to deal with anxiety, we can sometimes slip into a state of accepting the negative emotion of shame. That's why sometimes um, anxiety accompanies depression. They happen in the same place. We'll talk about that a little later. But the bottom line is that God does not want you to be ashamed. You're still okay. You're still okay. It says here, shame says, this is what shame says. There's something wrong with me and I don't want anyone to discover it. I don't want anyone to know about me being toe up from the flow up. <laughs> but let me help you out. If you're a human being, then you have issues. And you'll have issues even as a saved um, human being. <laughs> we are not raptured to heaven immediately. No. You got to deal with what's going on. It's our time now to take all that mess, all that abuse, all that trauma, all that, that, that religious thinking, all of the piousness that we have, and lay it at the feet of God and say, Now, God, help me sort through this because now I'm connected to the power that can help me. Remember, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what did that song say? Power, love, and a sound mind. We're going to go here. It says, The effect of being ashamed, listen to this, the effect of being ashamed is twofold. We are painfully aware of something that we've done wrong or we feel like we've done wrong. And that we feel like we're responsible for it. And again, as I said, we don't want anyone to discover it. Shame is shrouded in fear and pride. It is an attack of our sense of self-worth. So if I'm ashamed, I don't feel good about me. I'm no longer connecting to the image. You know, and I was listening to a teaching because believe you me, I have to be taught to. I'm a student of the spirit. And so as I teach you, I'm always looking to better Benita. Come on, somebody. That's for the rest of my life because I'm just like you. Amen. 
So I was listening to this teaching and they were talking about how we always talk about the dominion. And I do speak about the dominion that we walk in, the exousia that we walk in. But they say even before God gave mankind um, power or dominion in, the, in Genesis, he gave him an image. He made him in the image of him. And so shame, after the, the, um, what happened in the rebellion that happened in the, in the garden, most of us have issues with knowing who we are. Amen. And even after we come back to God or we come to God, by that time, the world has been our image consultant. Come on, somebody. The world has been our image consultant for so many years that we think what the world says is who we are. That if I make enough certain amount of money, if I live a certain place, if I have 2.5 children, if I have this type of house, if I'm whatever, if I even in the church, if I have this particular status or all this, then that makes me somebody. But you are already somebody. <laughs> Just simply because you are a creation of God. And we need to soak in that. And understand because you are a creation, in addition to being a creation, you have now given your life to God. Those are two different things. Amen. God created everybody. But everybody did not accept to have him to have an intimate relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Well, there's some benefits, and we'll talk about that another time. But right now, I want you to understand that you don't have to be ashamed. The scripture said that healing is the children's bread. The scripture talks about, tells you to forget not your benefits, that there's healing for you. Amen? All right, so we're going to go on, and we're not going to belabor this. And it says here, I want you for a moment to step out of the pressure and be a person <laughs> who simply loves God, a person, a child of God. And I want you to receive, you posture yourself to receive everything that Jesus died in order for you to have. Amen. We'll talk more about the different benefits so that we can understand because many believers don't understand benefit packages or the benefit package or they put some things in the benefit package that God never put in there. God never told us that we wouldn't have problems. Hello, hello. In fact, if we looked at the benefit document, you know, when you go to a job and you get a job and they gave you this huge, sometimes this huge um um, handbook or these benefit packets, a lot of us don't take the time to look through. We were, we're like, well, do they have health insurance <laughs> after they have that? But if you begin to flip through, you begin to find there's some other benefits, but there's some things that they don't have. God never, never, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He never told us that we would have a pain-free life. In fact, he told us that many are the afflictions of the righteous. In fact, he told us that he allows the sun to shine on both the just and the unjust. God put us on equal playing, uh, playing field as far as the world is concerned, as far as trials. But we have the presence of God on the inside of us. So we don't have to be shocked and emotionally devastated. And then if we allow it, God can actually take that mess, those ashes, and make beauty out of them. Amen. Now that's scripturally substantiated. And a lot of us, because we didn't, and I know I did not, and I'm not going to beat myself up because I've learned how not to have condemnation. And I also learned stuff happens. <laughs> hey, but now what you going to do? Amen. I can't stay in my yesterday. I was ignorant of the things of God yesterday. When I say my yesterday and my past, but now that I get the knowledge I'm going to apply it to my life because I only have but so many days on this earth. And let me tell you, I'm going to make them work for me. Amen. Whatever. I might be limping. I might be struggling. But baby, they're going to work for me. There is a legacy of people who chose that philosophy for their lives. You have to choose which philosophy you're going to hold on to. So it says here, God is well aware that we entered a relationship with him. When we did that, that we brought emotional, psychological, and physical damage um, baggage. He already knows we have a big old suitcase. <laughs> I had a couple of them. Wow. We brought deficiencies. Okay? Some of the baggage is not instantaneously eradicated at the moment that we said yes to Jesus. Amen? A lot of people get messed up there. Well, I said yes to Jesus. I went down to the altar, put my 
my hand up and I even felt cry. I was crying. And then I felt such a relief, but I'm still struggling with this, that, and the other. No, everything is sometimes healings are progressive. That's substantiated in the word of God. Jesus was healing a man. And he put it, he spat on him. My God, he spat on his eyes. This is in the word. And he said, do you have, is, how, can you see? The man opened his eyes and said, well, I see men as trees. So he wasn't seeing, it wasn't focused. So Jesus, he, before that time, he took him, took him out into the wooded area because he knew this, the approach that he was going to use was unorthodox. And so the man, was. there was a progression Healing does not always happen instantaneously, but a lot of times because of our mindset, our belief system, when it takes uh, more than a day for us to get healed or a year or 10 years for us to get healed, then we think somehow something's wrong with us or something's wrong with our relationship with God or something's wrong with God. But it really means that we need to become a little bit more educated about the fact that things don't always come off instantaneously. It may be years, and I'm and I'm sorry about that. Those of you who are struggling with, with have struggled with depression for years, I did it for years. Anxiety for years. In some instances, people are instantaneously um, delivered, and they they don't have any other. Um, a reoccurrence, but I'm here to tell you that because where depression and anxiety take place, you can because our soul is always open to the um to the influence and the attack of the enemy, just like our body is. So just because you have those who have been instantaneously healed and they never had another occurrence in 50 years or whatever, if we're not doing the maintenance work and there's work to be done. In order for us to use our soul in its original intent, we can move back into a place of depression. And that's why, and I addressed that issue and how to avoid or, or the aftercare practices of um, coming out of depression. So it goes to say here, um, it says here that instead of running away from God and being preoccupied with attempting to oppress people, or striving to reflect our perverted religious concept of being spiritual, <laughs> or just trying to be impressive, we'll just say, well, pfft, forget about God. I've done all this, though, right? All, everything I'm telling you, I have done it all. <laughs> and guess what? No shame. Because it's, it's truth that has made me free. It's truth that has made me connected to you, because we're more alike than different. It goes say here, it says here, we, as God's beloved children, should be running toward him, okay, at both to receive healing and wholeness. We're going to get ready to close out. The scripture says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, and 29, come, come to me, come. That means you put forth the effort, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. You see that? You come, he gives. You do your part, he does his part. God didn't create us to be robots. He gave us the gift of free will. He will not impose in our lives. He won't impose in our life just because we uh, are his children. God gives us. If we don't want God involved in our affairs of life, he will stay out. If we don't want God to help us in certain ways, he will not do it. He, that's why we invite. That's why he said, come on. I'm here for you. But you have to make that attempt. Come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble at heart. And you will find rest for your soul. There will be rest. In your emotions, if you just learn of me, see how I do it, see how my system works, learn of me, and then you're going to find rest for your emotions, rest for your mind, rest for your will. There's a place of rest, and that's where those who want to come out of anxiety and depression are. You are people who want rest. You just want rest. And God says, I have it for you, but you have to come to me, and you have to learn of me. And then you're going to receive from me. 
In closing, we need to get rid of the shame in order to receive authentic truth and position ourselves for the healing power of God. I want you to be able to receive all that he has given, okay? So I want you to be set free from um, anxiety, free from from being able to, you need to be able to deal with it when it, when it, when it encroaches upon you because things are going to happen. You're going to be um, offered fear. We talked about those who um, looked at the first um, part, we talked about the three different types of fear. And so fear is going to be offered to you, but you have to learn. You can learn beforehand how to handle it so that it does not enter into your soul. Amen. We need to be prepared. A so You're in a warfare. And you need to be prepared. Amen. In order. I'm going to get ready to put on some music and I have, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. Um, that has to do with letting go of the shame, because once again, a lot of us are, we we feel that I shouldn't be like this. I'm however old and, you know, I should be okay. And, <laughs> and uh, you're a person. Okay. And it's okay. You're still okay. Amen. Even if you have an issue with anxiety but God wants to know do you want do you want hold on one second do you want hold on one second do you want to be rid of the anxiety are you willing to it said here look at what he said again he said come to me right it says take my yoke that means join yourself with me join yourself with the way that I do things humble yourself Come on, somebody. I know you got an idea. I know you are Einstein. <laughs> but he said, humble yourself to the way you do things and learn of me. Learn how I do it. Learn how I help my people to get rid of anxiety. Learn how I help my, learn, learn my ways. That's what God is saying here. And then it says here, for I am gentle and humble. I'm not going to reject you. I want you to have a successful life. I don't want you to be full of fear. I don't want you to be full of anxiety because if you look at the word of God, which we need to do more of, you're going to see that things are not this external world. Things are going to get increasingly worse because the end of the of this age is coming. But that's not the end of the story. Amen. For us as a believer, there's a new heaven and a new earth that we're going to experience. We're going to go back to the life that was offered to us in Eden. Jesus Christ came to save us from the power of sin, the penalty of sin, and last, when we leave here, the presence of sin. Amen. But even while we're here, God has given us an antidote. But we have to do it His way. Amen. So I'm going to lead you through this prayer. And I want to let you know it's okay. If you're struggling with anxiety, it's okay if you're fearful. But now, what are you going to do? It's your choice. It's your choice. And I have found that doing things God's way, even though I don't always understand them or like them, hello, <laughs> the outcome is amazing. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Because guess what? He knows his creation better than you. You're our, God created us. He knows. A manufacturer knows his product better than the product. <laughs> so we have to learn to do his, things his way. All right. So I'm going to say this prayer. And I'm going to try to say it slow enough. It's, it's not that long. But this is where we're just going to release some things to God. Amen. You can just say amen as we go, as I pause. Or you can say what I've said. Ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne. I know that you it is not your desire. I know that it is not your desire for my soul to be oppressed with negative emotional clutter and fear. Lord, I have oppressed, repressed 
Let me start over there. Lord, I have repressed or held on to these feelings of inadequacy and shame concerning face, facing deficiencies like being filled with fear, even though I am your child. So you admitting it. I admit that my holding on to this is wrong because you told me in your word to cast all of my concerns, all of my cares on you. And when I held on to these feelings, plain and simple, I missed the mark or I sinned. I need my soul area to be cleansed. I need my mind to be renewed and my emotions decontaminated. I need you, Lord, to reset my will. Your word in 1 John 1 and 9 says that if I confess my missing the mark or my sin, that you would not only forgive me, but that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness or everything that would hinder my fellowshipping with you. I ask you right now, to flood my entire soul with the spirit of peace that already resides within me through the presence of your indwelling spirit which is in my spirit. I don't know how long this process will take before I feel totally at peace within so I will continue to come to you and confess these feelings until I am relieved Lord I do not have to feel ashamed for feeling afraid it's a part of the human experience but through you you can Eliminate the fear as I do my part in partnering with your spirit. I receive your instructions. Teach me. Open my mind. Unclog my ears. And give sight to my eyes. In Jesus' name. Well, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. You know what I just realized? <laughs> Which is so funny. I did not mean to share this with my regular page. <laughs> I thought I had I thought I had put this teaching on my <laughs> on my on the on the unshackled from depression and anxiety page. But as I begin to watch the names of people who are looking at this, I know that you're not in the group. <laughs> so I'm discovering right now that somebody on my regular page, I guess you must have needed it. Amen. But this really is more of a closed lesson for the individuals in Unshackled from Depression and Anxiety. But of course... If you had the opportunity to hear it, God bless you. And also, I want to invite you, even if you're not a member, that you can look at um, all of these videos that I'm doing, the teaching videos, um, at Unshackled from Depression YouTube channel. Amen. Because some teaching that I do, I do not um, share with my regular page. It's just exclusively for the members of Unshackled from Depression YouTube, um, um, page. It is a private page, and I do want to invite you if you would like to come 
and visit. But again, even if you don't, please go to Unshackled from Depression YouTube page and you can see what they're seeing. <laughs> God bless you. So thank you so much for joining me, all of you who joined me. God bless you. Such a pleasure to serve God's people. I know how it is to have paralyzing, crippling fear, to not be able to move. A preacher, that's right. But you know, behind a preacher, there's a person. Behind a person who has gone to church, have longevity in certain assignments, there's a person. And so that's what God wants to teach us, is how to deal with our person. So that we can have the life that he intended for us to have. God bless you and thank you. So I got to get off of here so I can share it with my page. I got folks waiting for me. <laughs> waiting really to hear God. Amen. Hear God. Help them as they overcome. Learn how to overcome anxiety. So they'll be able to say, I will not fear. God bless you. Till we meet again. <laughs>